Um, we'll call the meeting to order at 7.06. Um, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? It just, the policy said possible we're not taking action and I've, I've received some feedback. I just need to, they're not significant changes, but I need to get it back in front of the full board. Okay. We'll take action on these next month. But. Okay. All right, anything else? Um, we'll move to um, the consent agenda to approve the minutes of Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. Move to approve. We have a second. I didn't get them in the packet, sorry. No. Okay. All right, uh, it's moved and seconded. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, the minutes are approved. We got pegged now. Yeah, looks like we got everybody. Okay, uh, now on to public comments. Uh, do we have any public that would like to speak at this time? Board comments. Does any board members want to say anything? So I guess board slash public comment as a parent maybe. How how do we feel the process with the the e forms are going to go this year? I know. As a parent, I would say they went smashingly well this year for yeah. myself filling them out. Because I haven't done it yet. But so much better. I just remember last year I really took my time and filled them all out, and then all of a sudden became so and so. You're going to love it. This and so and so. You're going to say this is that. the best I thing I did all, all night. So. I think we've worked to try to improve it's the experience. So right? I'm not being. Is it? It's so much better. Okay. <laughs> it was well, all I'm just saying because it was it was a nice it was job. all it was, it's, <laughs> once you get there it's all in one place you don't have to click other places. I'm looking at Parker because he's worked on this too. I think it was so much better, Parker. Thank you. Is it better for multiple children? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Especially, I even had a kid transition from a different school, right? So Jordan's uh -huh. coming here from Rochester. Her stuff was all there. Good, awesome. We'll try it. That well, e thanks. It, until you've done one, like last year was. Last really, year was a different was really story. A struggle, so. Last year was a different story. Yeah. Oh, good. That's good to hear. Do it well. Great. Shout out to Parker. Yeah. Look yeah. forward to Parker. That. Amazing. So much better. We'll have a lot of happy parents. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that the experience. I'm was glad I did it ahead of time so I could report on it. <laughs> so I come through and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but now I'm going to feel better saying it. Okay. Um, we don't have a celebration of learning for tonight, so uh, we'll go to the superintendent report. So you have my report in hand. I just really wanted to highlight um, uh, a few things. One is just the um, incredible amount of work that our staff does over the summer months. Like, it it's, hits me more and more every year. Like, schools really are open year round. Like, we ran six weeks of summer camp this summer, which was an additional week than we have in the past. We offered some middle school programming to kids. Um, we've had teams of teachers working almost every week. I would say, other than the 4th of July, some group of teachers been engaging in the other professional development that we're hosting in the SU and or meeting and teaching teams. We had uh, your district had vertical alignment with English department yesterday at central office. Today we have training happening in regards to direct instruction for some of our reading interventionists. Like, there's just a lot happening, and, it, and it's a huge shout out to the staff for all their efforts that they're putting in over these summer months. A lot of teacher um, leadership. Sorry to mm -hmm. put it. What's that? A lot of teacher leadership. A ton of teacher leadership. Um, I do worry a little bit about um, <coughs> just fatigue. It's, it's always something I worry about. We have a lot of exciting, great things happening over the summer, but like that idea of like pausing and refreshing worries me. So it's something that I just wanted to mention one, twofold. One, thank you. Two, to the board to just say, I just think it's, a, it's in my radar to monitor. Like, I think there's a lot of good work happening, which is pushing us forward in the, in the, into the summer. I worry well what that means in regards to fatigue come May. That's all. Um, the we're going to talk about it. Some of the, the summer work that's happening in buildings and grounds. A huge shout out to our custodial and maintenance team working around EEI. I'm really excited about uh, the summer capital improvement projects that we've been putting in place, including having a painting team 
um, that's been overseen by uh, Mike Ballou, who's a teacher down at Hartford who has done painting in the past, who's overseeing a team of uh, some of our White River Valley High School students. I don't know if you noticed, they've done a ton of painting at the Royalton campus, and we've done some, we freshened up the front up here already. Um, and so that's been a great um, project and approach, I think, to get that work done internally and in-house without having to contract it. Um, and then uh, know that John Rhodes has been working hard um, with our, our lawn care um, contracted service, and I'm blanking on his name right now, so I apologize. Jacob. Jacob, yeah. but also the rec group in town. Uh, to get the Bethel Fields back up and running. After, from the flooding, that's really the part where we got hit, was at our Bethel Fields. And then um, just, you know, uh, new teacher orientation happens next Wednesday. Um, and teachers are back in the buildings uh, next Friday. That's a complete day for room setup uh, for teachers. And support staff will be coming in too. They may have a little work that they're doing. Uh, in regards to some specialized training around social emotional work and de-escalation um, with Claire Martin, but also helping teachers with room setup. Uh, we do expect that teachers will be able to access room still next Wednesday, even in, in like example on this campus in Bethel at that middle school where they haven't had access due to work around our HVAC and heating system. And I'll take any questions folks may have. <coughs> Did we end up with any vacancies going into the school year, either campus? We're looking for a couple paraprofessional staff, uh, and we'd love to have one more. One more interventionist. interventionist. <laughs> and and we're all language here at the middle school. Yeah. Okay. So really not that bad. We're, we're in pretty, pretty good, good place. Pretty no, good. I feel pretty good about hiring. Yeah. Good. I had them all right. That's all. Yep. I was driving back from the Lake Surgeon, and I think it, we passed four schools that had paraprofessionals needed. <laughs> Signs up. I mean, the good news is, um, the good news is, is that we're still hiring, right? Yeah, like absolutely. I just interviewed. We needed a <coughs> a, a food nutrition assistant uh, for our lunch service program here on the Bethel campus. We just completed a hire today for that. Um, I've interviewed some paraprofessionals and special ed pairs for across the district, so we're still getting hires. They're still happening. Um, one of the things that we're looking to do um, that I think that will be finalized this week, and I'll put it in my full board report, is we are going to set up a table at the Summer's Fair this year for the four days uh, for WRBSU that will have information about our community school work, pathways, um, any job openings we may have, our strategic plan, opportunity to just engage with the community um, and so I will be looking for board members and administrators to consider volunteering a couple hours at the fair to do um, the table um, so I'm hoping that is another way to generate just interest in the work that's happening but also I think there's folks that sometimes think I can't be a substitute teacher but actually they have a lot of the skill set that they could be a really great substitute teacher so I think there's just opportunity to engage with the community there And bus routes are totally uh, bus drivers, because I heard Chris mention that. We are down two bus drivers in the SU, SU wide right now that we're still looking for. But STA has been able to cover the route. Actually, there we're going to be partnering. Um, one of the routes that we're having trouble with is up over uh, from Rochester over here to Bethel. Uh, they've reached out with Randolph. I think Randolph's going to partner with us to be able to utilize their bus to get our students over here to Bethel. Um, just as they're coming over the hill, they're willing to help us out before we finish a driver. Um, and then we're still down one driver in Royalton. Um, but Stacy Emerson, the general manager there, has a plan, so it shouldn't, shouldn't result in late routes or anything. Okay. Otherwise, we're staffed across the SU with drivers. And I'm having a, uh, we're hosting an SU-wide bus driver uh, meet and greet and luncheon uh, next Tuesday at the Royal Bay campus. All right, thanks, Jamie. Um, principal support. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
to start with you just introducing yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. It seems more appropriate than launching. I've met some of you. I'm Pierre Laflamme, the middle school principal here on this campus. Yeah. Uh, glad to have you here initially now. Thank you. That's great. And now that you're here, you get to go first. Sure. So, now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's great. I know you folks have, have gone through this packet. I just want to point out a couple of the highlights of things that are going on. Um, keeping an eye on the work we're doing in terms of identifying, clarifying, supporting our systems, MTSS systems of support around here. Um, there's been a lot of professional development, both with the admin team and teacher leaders at the Best Institute. We continued some of that work and discussion at the VPA conference in our admin retreat with teacher groups that were coming in. And today, I joined some other administrators working with the state and an outside agency uh, who are providing an entire slate of trainings that go throughout the entire year all the way to next August, all designed to strengthen how we use data, how we bolster our universal um, supports and universal academics, um, what we typically might call tier one. Uh, while also finding ways to identify a, a phrase that's new to me, um, teaching and planning to the edges, making sure that all students are included in how we use data and meet their educational needs. So when just want to kind of echo what our superintendent has said, there's been a lot of professional development over the summer. A lot of our teachers engaged in collaborating across the hall with partners in different content areas, and it's actually quite exciting. So although the board packet may have a thin blurb, there's an awful lot going on. Yeah, I think that both Jamie and Pierre have covered, kind of covered it all. Uh, I would also just say we're kicking off uh, with some open houses and our, our ice cream socials are coming up, so we're excited to have that. Uh, in addition to some of the PD that Jamie mentioned, we have uh, another optional math uh, training for our new teachers, which is going to be happening the day before. Uh, our mandatory, mandatory newbie trainings, and uh, I think the feedback I'm hearing from our new hires is like, thank you, this, this feels like a lot of preparation, so that feels good right now. Yeah, and so the professional development started at the Maker School program that uh, Jeff Clayton and I went with the middle school staff. That was outstanding than the best uh, conference, and one of the things about best, sometimes when you go to conferences, it reinforces what you're already doing, which is really awesome. And the first conference we went to, the thread there, the lady spoke about meeting students at the door, which was one of our non-negotiables this year that we had last year, I should say. And teachers are doing that. And it builds community, but it also builds your this culture of the school. The hallways were a lot cleaner. I mean, kids were more engaged, and they were in, in the class on time. So that was kind of good. So we're going to continue with meeting students at the door. Having learning targets on the board was another one that they mentioned that we talked about that we're going to direct with. Um, we also had uh, procedures in the classroom that we're going to go over. So a lot of that stuff was really interesting. It reinforces what we've been doing and will continue to do. Um, I don't know how I can talk, not talk about the storm of July 10th. We were at school and all of a sudden Paul Brock comes in and says, group 14's flooding, you got to go. And all Lori and I could think about was just like, too late to put sandbags up because of Irene. We know how bad it, we took it for Irene. And, so the next day, I mean, I was getting reports from Paul all night long about the water and it hasn't reached the fields yet. And then uh, John came down, took pictures of Bethel's fields and I just, and then somebody took some of Carpenter. So I just figured we were gonna get it. And I don't know how we escaped that in our, our but fortunately we did. So um, Broadbrook, where I live, right up there, road in South Burlington is still closed. We'll be closed, I think, for a year. So I'll be taking a long way to school. Um, I've taken my bike a few times this year, but it seems like it rains every day. So, um, Jamie mentioned this, but the work that has been done, uh, I can't thank Bruce Tibbetts enough for all the work that he's done. He's amazing in his work that he does. Uh, the bridge is a great idea because we were having issues with, with the support of the bridge. Some of the boards had gone. One of the, the steps at the end had gone, broken away, and one of our faculty members slipped on it and I was and it's always you know snowy and covered in freezing rain and whatnot so I'm really excited to have the covered bridge there um, Lori Tammy and Colleen have done amazing this summer um, I know the school's been a, a lot of traffic coming and going and they're doing an amazing job and it looks like they'll be finished right on time uh, it seems like a short summer they keep talking about it seems like school went a week longer than they were used to and staff stayed in to clean up the rooms and get organized 
for the ready to start of summer. And then uh, the one planet went a week longer than normal. So Lori is just like, ah. So um, I talked her off the shelf to today, so she's good. And then our community barbecue, which we had last year, which I think was a, a great hit, is Thursday, August 24th at 5 o'clock. So we'll continue with that. Um, so invite all your friends. I'll make sure there's more signs out. We put a couple out across and in the town, but now we're going to spread out to the other towns. The bridge looks real nice. There's some ambient lighting coming. Oh, we just put some lights <laughs> in. Oh, really? yeah, yeah. If you go at night, there's some safety I didn't lights. even think of that. That's so, the only thing you probably could do to make it better is, is make lights. sure that it's lit yeah. So, yeah. so that I don't fall on my yeah. butt when I'm going to <laughs> watch a the theater presentation. Game. Yeah. Yeah. We got it covered. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Anybody have anything else for the principals? Then we'll move to Tara. So you all have my report. It outlines what we're working on in the business office during the month of August. It's a very busy time for us. We are closing out and wrapping up fiscal year 23 and at the same time gearing up and making sure everything is ready to go for fiscal year 24. Um, all stat books were due today and they have all been submitted. So that is huge. Um, other than that, the only other thing on my report is the discussion items later on your agenda. All right, next era. Um, so policy committee, there's these two, um, the access control and visitor po management policy and the environment and emergency preparedness drill policy. Which I didn't print off either, sorry. Okay. I was running from Stratford today. <laughs> sorry. Um, so they were included in the email if people had a chance to read them ahead of time. Um, this is good so, there's uh, there's gonna uh, there's there's a few typos in there that I need to clean up and in general um, I think we'll be ready to take action on this um, next month um, at all of our local district boards and then the full board at the end of the month typically we do the full board first but I really need to get it back in front of the policy committee um, just to help folks uh, wrap their heads around there's been just been some questions at some boards around. What does it mean in regards to have optional um, scenarios in regards to our emergency drill um, preparedness? And what that means is, is that you know within our structures now that in the event that there was uh, a concern around a threat on the school campus, we have options-based decision making. Right? It used to be we would lock our doors and we would go into lockdown. We are we are moving toward a system that. Uh, buys by the Homeland Security Run High Fight model, where f folks have tactical decisions in regards to where an intruder could be within the building, the approaches that we would announce where the intruder was in the building, and that then other folks within the building would have choices in regards to whether you would run, whether you would hide and lock down um, within the school building. So, what this is getting at, this policy when it talks about that, is that is the fact that that's the that's the work that we're doing um, in making those changes and so you know schools are starting to do tabletop exercises with staff to give drill scenarios around if this was to happen how would we handle it um, so know that that is going to be um, occurring and then the access control and visitor management policy isn't really going to change much of anything for what you do currently as schools we've already had our doors locked down you buzz in, you have to come in and sign in, you need to have a visitor badge. That was never in law or policy. It's right. just schools started doing that procedurally. So this is really to implement that in policy. The big change now in law and policy is, is that the SU needs to be doing that now as well, okay. uh, which is a big change for our practice of how we handle ourselves at the SU. We're not um, equipped at this point to have cameras in our doors right and to buzz folks in. Um, we're working on seeing what that would take to have that happen. We expect that in the next month we'll have it so that this central office is locked down and we have the ability to bus folks in. Um, but that is required in statute now too and then is aligned within that policy. These, uh, these policies are essentially boilerplate from the Vermont School Boards Association after that law took effect. So expect in September that we would hopefully be able to take action on. The statute 
Uh, this law was passed on these two policies requiring them to be put into place in those procedures uh, in May, and they wanted them um, approved by August 1st. The Secretary of Ed, uh, Interim Secretary of Ed, acknowledged the superintendents that that was not a very realistic timeline, and so she said as long as you're showing that you're making progress toward them, that you've got drafts, that the boards are, are reading them, that that would be fine to try to get them done and approved as soon as possible this fall. Uh, is this going to affect how the high school entrance and back works? Well, this policy would read, it's about during the school day, so okay. we're going to define that again. Um, the length of our school day will be from, you know, 8 until when students would leave. And within procedure, which I'm thinking, you know, is essentially going to be when one plan it ends is what we're essentially going to define it. We don't have someone to bus people in during practices all night, right? And so um, that's how we'll define the school day. And so that door would remain locked during when school starts. Which is essentially what happens right now. I think, yeah. It doesn't change what our procedures are. We, it, this is not going to change us, like, having a lockdown the whole time, right? Like before school starts, they'll still, they'll be yeah. unlocked. Okay. Any other comments on those policies? But, I mean, it does speak to, and I think it's something that the task force needs to take up, and when we get to EEI, I've asked them to come meet with us again here soon, is the, I think we have some work to do in regards to security, in regards to in general, it would be nice to have a holding area at each building like we do in Royalton, um, meeting here in Bethel. Um, it's sort of, at the middle school, you can picture it quite easily. Um, as you're approaching and there's the overhang, that could get <coughs> boxed in. And then you people could enter there and then they would get buzzed in. Right. Um, and Eric and I talked a little bit when he was here doing the walkthroughs in June, uh, sorry, July, when I was here with him on the HVAC work of how the elementary probably wouldn't actually be that hard to do the same um, as you walk in. Yep. And um, and then discussion about the high school entrance and do we want camera out at the high school so the high schoolers could access that door throughout the day and be able to be busted. Right? The double entry. Okay. So I think that that's like for future, like next yes. summer possibly work. All right. Um, so under the discussion items, the annual board retreat, possible date and time. Well, we actually did we schedule one? I didn't know. We did schedule. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I blew that. I uh, yeah. I meant to get back to you on this. That's all right. So what is we can remind? Uh, yeah. So we will be doing it. Um, September 22nd at 5 p.m. That's a Friday, right? Yes. I think so. Yes. All right. And my sense is we would do dinner. Yes. Rodney's making brisket, right? Is that what we talked about? <laughs> did I miss all that? Yes, I did. I'm just volunteering. Uh -huh. All right, um, so the, uh, okay, summer capital projects, update on EEI work. Yeah, so um, I was able to do a walkthrough um, in the middle of July. It was right after the flood beach, which didn't work well for a lot of our board members. They weren't able to be there across the SU, but um, I was able to do a walkthrough. We've been having owners meetings every Thursday with EEI. Uh, the principals join and uh, head of maintenance and actually Janet Brown joins here at the, the middle school campus. Um, so their timeline, they are on schedule. Folks will have access to their rooms. Our, our, the radiators got back ordered for here and in Rochester, which is not ideal. Um, and so they expect them by the second week of September. Their plan is to come in and install them on, during the weekend like the second weekend in September, they'll be installed. They have cleaned up the room space so that it looks still neat and tidy, um, where the old ones are all removed. Um, 
So that's the only, all, everything else, all the piping, everything's run in the rooms. We just need to hang the radiators, which they said doesn't actually take that much time. That's what they indicated. A week and they'll bang it out. Uh, so that's the delay here, other than the fact of we're still having issues with Act 250 permitting on the wood chip um, boiler. The propane boiler is all good to go and running, uh, or will be running when the radi radiators get put in. But hot water is good to go, all that's running. Um, we have hit it. The issue that we're having with Act 250 permitting is actually about carbon footprint because the way the Act 250 permit here worked was that due to the oil of boiler, we're now moving to a wood chip boiler, which changes the footprint. It changes it in a positive way. <clears throat> it, you know, these boilers are pretty efficient. Um, but I guess it still needs to go through the entire Act 250 permitting, possibly. Um, although we were asking for a, 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 essentially we appealed to try to get um, approval that it wouldn't have to go through the whole process. You probably understand it was, Act 250. It's kind of a, a it's an odd thing, thing where the, 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 the new two systems that will be installed together will be almost 60% more efficient than the current system that we have. I don't understand. <laughs> as, a, as an entire model. Yeah. And the state had approved that model and obviously not only approved it but gave us money for it. But then when Act 250 was writing their opinion on it, um, they had no problem with the LP versus the oil. But when it came to the wood pellet versus the oil, the wood pellet actually has a little bit larger carbon footprint than oil. Even though that at the end of the day, the wood pellet system maybe only makes up 20% of the whole heating element. Mm. So the, instead of looking at it as a group, they, look, they broke it down individuals. So that's where it's been uh, held back. But, but again, the LP bur burner isn't going to stop us from heating the school. No, it can do the whole school. Uh, it can do it, you know, we might, might take a little bit more gas in the, in the wintertime until we get it on board. But uh, it's, it's uh, to something that doesn't make a lot of sense. But uh, they're. I've been told that they're for, still hoping November. That it, so know, they still it might have it for the winter. The approval, yeah. yeah, probably December. December. They just, just well, open. If they don't have it for November, does that mean that they can't have it for winter? Or can it be put in subsequently in December? In All the pipings run. So really oh. what it is, is it's, no we, what we couldn't do is actually put the boiler in, the wood chip boiler couldn't go in, right. and we couldn't pour the pad right. and have the silo. Oh. So that's all we're missing right now. So it's pour the pad, install the silo, put in the wood chip boiler. All the, all the, if we, I brought you to the boiler room, it's all ready to be hooked up. Like the platforms are poured, all the lines are ready to connect. Just can't put it in until we get done. All right. But, but typically we wouldn't use the wood pellet until portion of December. it until late December when we need the high VTU usage right. anyway. So we're hoping it won't be a big deal, but. I think the only thing that was kind of a big deal to us was the registers becoming backwards yes. because that yeah. was an in class yes. component, but we found a workaround. Right. Yeah. The um, and just the update on the lighting. The lighting will definitely happen. They their crews have started in the SU. Um, I did just so the rub board knows. We did a lot of work here, so I had them prioritize starting with a few schools that did no work in the SU other than just lighting, so that it just felt like everyone was getting a little. So they're, they're going to be here. It'll get done this fall. Um, and the, what they do is they do it third shift. After hours. Yeah. All right. Well, look forward to seeing it when it does finally get done. I don't think things work out. <laughs> well, can, yeah. I, I mean, my I always, I well, yeah. Considering what it could have been, like I feel like in general the way these things work and timelines and delays, it's always going to be something. So. It's always going to be something that we're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, then let's move to the revised lease agreement. So in my report, I gave you the details on the final lease agreement. The interest rate that you had originally approved back in February was up to five percent and the final interest rate came in at 5.22%. The final payment will be $119,780.80. The impact on the interest rate to the payment was 
$1,761.50. In the FY24 budget, we had used a projected lease payment um, that EEI had provided of $79.6, so we will make that adjustment in FY25 in thereafter for the actual payment. I'm not overly concerned on that because we have other areas in the budget where we will have room to compensate for that increase. All right. So the motion that I need you to make is a motion to accept the final interest rate of 5.22 percent. Seconded. Um, was that sufficient or do you need us to say something? Okay. All right, is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, um, so we'll do a roll call Who first vote. did that motion? Uh, okay. Ed. Who did what? Oh, Chris. I think Chris. Chris. I seconded. And seconded. Okay. Um, Chris. Thanks. So we'll do a roll call vote um, at one of the, uh, at the board chair training. It was mentioned that uh, for hybrid meetings, we should be doing roll call votes. So, uh, Peggy, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, how long is that interest rate for? How, how many years? So it's a 15, 15 year lease, Peggy. Peggy. So 15 years. So if, if the interest rate drops, we're still at 5.2, right? right? Yes, it's, it's a, a fixed, fixed interest, interest rate. rate. Fixed interest, okay. That was my question. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion on the motion? All right. Then we'll uh, do a roll call vote. Um, Nancy? You want to just say aye so that we hear you? Aye. Great. Uh, Rodney? Aye. Peggy? Aye. Ed? Aye. And Chris? Aye. And I, so it passes in this Thank you. Thank you. All right, that concludes our action and discussion items. So we'll move to public comment. Is there any public that would like to make a comment at this time? Okay, we talked a little bit about it, but new hires and resignations. Uh, it was outlined, I think, in one of the attachments, so no resignations. <coughs> um, we have a new, I have to read it, it's too many, hold on, give me two seconds. Had, um, right, I'm ready, I got it, I got it. <laughs> right here. Uh, we have Libby Lane, she's a second grade teacher here at Bethel Elementary. Alyssa Castellini, who's going to be teaching fifth grade homeroom, but mostly science for three through five. Mitch Smollier, Smol who's our new school counselor here on the El Bethel Elementary campus. Cassandra Bertolini, who's a librarian on this campus. Stacy Rupp, who's a librarian in the South Royalton campus. Someone did you burn already. Yeah, I, I just missed, I don't know who we didn't do last. No, you're good. <laughs> Sorry. Wendy Grunthal, who's kindergarten in Royalton. Melissa Wilson, who's first grade in Royalton. Tiffany Bates, who's um, grade three in Royalton. James Blondin, who's PE in Eco in Royalton. Crystal Lumber is officially hired as interventionist, although she's been with us for a little bit um, previously. Uh, and the new, a new all ed teacher is Christine Swenson. And I think that- That's in our special ed. Is intensive program right classroom. right i think that's i think that is enough <laughs> right. thank you um i will say i appreciated the um little bio that you posted on social media um, i'm trying to dribble them out slowly so yeah, yeah. Okay. i let the kindergarten teachers next last so yeah. we'll keep on they'll keep coming great thank you um and Tammy, if you need that for the notes, just email Andra. I don't, yeah, I emailed her last time, so she has a I think list. She has I, can't, I don't think any of them have shifted. I don't think shifted. any of those, other than just Mitch. Mitch Smaller was the last Smaller. one we had for the school counselor. Yeah. I'm just going to point to the principal's report. It's got a full listing, right? Sure does. 
if they go to the attachment, okay. receive the welcome Great. letter, it has the full listing. Great, thanks. Yeah. All right, uh, we don't have any other, so future agenda items. We've got the elementary school um, structure discussion, um, which you guys have something. Yeah, to yeah, some yeah the principals are good connect with staff too. I think having some staff feedback on that will be helpful to incorporate into the presentation. Um, and we'll have a we'll have a presentation for you. Okay. Um, then I guess we'll probably have the uh, policies those, po those policies will need action. Yep. Yep. My sense is you're gonna have a, another reading. Well we'll see what the full board says. The, the board uh, member conduct and code of ethics policy <clears throat> felt like it was real close. And I was actually going to reach out to you, you, Andrew, to see if you wanted to join the next policy committee meeting. They, uh, some of the changes we made in regards to um, just giving the boards like some different opportunities of how, like what it, what constitute a complaint to be brought to the board level versus not. There was just some questions around that. So that. Remember, we use the language that came out of the, the essential work of boards. It's probably not the title of the book. I was getting wrong. <laughs> I mean, my board pack. <coughs> There's, there was just some conversation around that. So anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to capture some of that and keep the original draft, but then have another draft based on what they said. And sure. That will get kicked around a little bit okay. on Tuesday. If anyone, uh, reminder that full board meeting is on Tuesday, if folks are around. This Tuesday. This to coming Tuesday. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. 27. All right. Um, so our next meeting date is Tuesday, September 19th at 7 p.m. in Royalton. Right? And then we do have our retreat that mm -hmm. Friday, the 27th at 5. We should probably have an agenda item to finish up the agenda on the retreat. Maybe? Yes. That's a good idea. So if you guys have things that you think we should talk about, We'll discuss that at the next meeting. And my sense is we'll have another update on just building work. Great. I think that's it. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have a second. Second. Great. All right. You guys. I'm off.